So hi everyone, my new book Lanchin in your pocket beginner's guide to building gen AI applications using LLMs is out now on Amazon. The book is already a bestseller as you can see it is trending on hash 3 on Amazon bestsellers. So go get, grab your copies and find the link in the description below. So hi everyone, today we will be uh, trying out DSPY framework for generative AI applications. So basically it can be taken as an alternate for Langchain. So I hope that you have already used Langchain. The key difference between the two framework is DSVI is more programming focused while Langchain is more prompting focused. So in that case you need to tune up your prompt and then expect better results. But in case of DSVI you once write a code snippet and eventually uh, DSVI will tune the prompt for you. So the big headache of generating the best prompt to get the answer is not on your head. It is with DSPY now. So that's the best part about DSPY. So let's get started. In this particular tutorial, we'll be running through a few examples how DSPY works. So let's see. So first of all, we will be loading our LLM of our choice. I'm using Gemini Pro model here uh, with the free API key that you can create. If you don't know, you can check out my previous video on how to create a uh, Gemini API key for free. Uh, not just Gemini, uh, DSPY supports most of the models like OpenAI or Mistral and even Olama. So you can check out how uh, DSPY supports these models. Right now I'm using uh, Gemini Pro. Now once I'm done, I'm setting the Gemini model uh, as the large model that it would be using. So hence now in the next examples, we'll be seeing that how DSPY can be used to build out small applications. So the first one is a chain of thought application where we would be inputting a question and expecting an output. So if you don't know about chain of thought, it is a type of prompt technique that I've already explained in a previous video where the uh, LLM thinks in step by step process. So uh, in the first example, as you can see, implementing a chain of thought and then giving it a framework. This would be the question and, I, uh, and you want an answer out of it. So this is a very baseline example here you can see that. Once we have created an application with this, the next thing is you just need to pass the question variable that you have mentioned here. So basically these are variables name that you are passing out. Question and answer. So if you pass out the name for question variable, eventually you will get an answer. Now if you see how many players are there in the game that Virat Kohli plays. So it's a trick question because eventually it is not a direct question. The uh, LLM needs to think in steps. Key first, it needs to figure out which game Virat Kohli plays and then how many players are there. That is why we have chosen the uh, chain of thought application. As you can see, we have got a straight away response. Now, uh, going uh, a little more interesting, see this one where we are doing a sentiment analysis. So, this is a sentence. This time, we are not going with a chain of thought module. We are going with predict. It is straightforward. You don't need to write anything if you notice. I'm just uh, saying that this is a sentence that I would be inputting and I want an output as sentiment. That's it. And eventually once you call this particular function classify, you get a sentiment as an output. See, uh, here you can see that we haven't used any sort of a prompt here. We have just given it my expected input and expected output and eventually the input sentence. That's it. And the whole application has been built. There's no prompt that we have given. Making it a little more complicated, here you can see that uh, in this case, I'm, uh, uh, I'm inputting a sentence and asking for two outputs, sentiment and the reason. And then again calling the classifier function. Now if you see, we have got both the outputs, positive and output.reason also has come out. So it is very, very easy to create applications now. If you wish to have three inputs and five outputs also, you just need to comma separate them and pass the input variables into the classifier function and everything will be expected from the output. Now here, uh, now in these previous examples, we saw how we can give an input and get multiple outputs. Now let's make it a little more complicated. In this case, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to provide a context as well. Can be taken as a RAG application, can be a, minim uh, a minimal RAG application, but in this case, we are providing the context manually, not from vector DB. So this is a context that I'm setting up. So in this case, I'm having two input fields. You can even use this particular signature also, like you know, just mentioning in a text, uh, in a simple sentence, or you can create functions like this also. Where in this particular function, I'm passing a dspy.signature. Right now, we're not jumping into the complications of the package, but trying to understand its applications. 
here you can see that i have mentioned two inputs and one of the input i have given a description as context to be used while answering so basically it is a sort of a metadata for the input key what is the use of the input field so if you look into this chain of i'm again creating a chain of thought application and passing the correctness function into this the class we have we have created which intakes two inputs and gives a single output and the single output also have given a description of what sort of an output I, I am expecting. Just notice that I am not tuning anything. You can give it a broken sentence also and internally it will tune it for you. Now once you see it is very easy to create. As I told we are uh, expecting two inputs this time. So I am passing into this function context. RCB and IPL has never won a trophy ever and the text. RC fans are happy as RCB won the IPL 2020 final and lift the trophy. Now the output I am expecting is true or false, indicating that the text is possible given the context. Now if you look into the output, it is giving you a rational also, why it has given such an answer. Reasoning is also coming and correctness also, the final in output that we are expecting. So we are slowly making the application more complex. In the first case, in the first case we implemented a chain of thought application with just one line of code. In the second case, we went with a more independent system where we are providing an input and expecting any output. This can be sentence. In place of sentence, you can ask it to output, uh, say, the uh, named entities present in the text, anything. In the third example, we asked it to output multiple output sentiment plus the reason. In the, third, in the fourth example, we are inputting multiple fields and expecting a single output and also giving the description about the input and the output field. So description might be useful at times because uh, if you are going with a custom uh, if you are going with a custom output, for example, classify as A or B. So in that case, you might need to give the description. So it can be helpful in that case. Now in this particular use case, as you can see that instead of implementing chain of thoughts, we are implementing React prompt engineering. So React basically stands for reason and action. It is also a type of uh, prompt engineering technique that you can check out on my channel. I have already covered this as well. So here you can see that react. I'm asking it a mathematical question and it is able to give an answer for this also 5 plus 2. Right. So this is uh, not jumping into the complications of the framework. Just give you a foot for thought key how DSPY works and how it is making your life easier. Now in any of the question cases you saw that we are not providing any sort of prompt key output as number or uh, input will be this output would be this so there is no prompt engineering technique that we are following we are just using the functions and eventually dspy is tuning the prompts for us internally and then giving us an output so dspy primarily can be taken as a prompt tuning framework which uh, does that internally and it doesn't uh, is not visible to you while in case of langchain that has to be done manually and hence, DSP appears to be a better alternative if you are into programming and the results are also decent. I'm trying out more complex applications and will be releasing more tutorials soon. Thank you so much.